Welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Hurley and welcome to another Hurley Investments short educational video. Today I'm going to spend about 10 minutes with you going over rates of return. We always hear, and if you look at that reddish orange linear average return line, we always hear that the S&P historical average is a 7.75% return. And so unfortunately, when individuals that always ask me, what's your average rate of return and can you beat the S&P 500? Most people for some godforsaken reason feel that the market moves just like that red line, that on average their portfolio is gonna grow 7.75%. I'm always asked, what is your average rate of return? When the correct question should be, what is your portfolio growth? Yearly averages are not important. In fact, if you look at what a yearly average really is, go ahead and look at that gray line. That gray line is an average rate of return from 2000 through 2019. Now, if you do take the current 2019 returns of being up about 23%, it will change that and you will finally bounce above that doubling line right there, which means it's taken you 19 years to double your portfolio or double every penny you have that was in there when you started 18, 19 years ago. Now, some people do put money in monthly but again, it still will get this growth rate. And the growth rate is that, that blue line, right? The, the real returns up and down. You're going to have to fight, be down 40% at one point in time. Double it. Oh, it comes back down. Triple it. Oh, it's back down. I mean, it just it, it's all over the place for percentages. And I will do another one of these short videos on how average rates of return are not your friend. But rates of return are important because number one, you might be told over a five-year average that you get a 7.75%, which means as you're doing your calculations, one, two, three, four, five, you're thinking that your rate of return is, hey, it, it's gonna it's gonna double my portfolio or more importantly every 7.75 it might do it every eight years right or in all honesty it's nine years to double to 7.75 percent return you might find out your real portfolio is down 40 percent kevin where did you get this data from where are you saying this from well I just created a chart. It's nothing more than an Excel chart. If you put $100 in, rates of return for 2000, 2001, two, and, and as you just go through, Kevin, well, why do you choose 2000? In all honesty, that's when I started putting real money in my stock market. And I saw that it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to add up. Yes, in 2019, your, your rate of return will take that $100 to probably around 230 but that assumes we don't lose 15% in 2020, in which case it's gonna be 20 years to double your portfolio. I try to show a lot of people a chart. Let me show you a real chart. When you look at a real chart, you can see that you might've put money in as early as two, uh, excuse me, as early as 1997, and you went through a 13 and a half year period of no growth. Or maybe you put it in at 2000 and again, you went through a 13 and a half year period of a lost decade where we literally had zero growth in our S&P 500. The sad part is there were fees being used and taken out all during that time period. So most people that literally had their money in for a 13, 14, 15 year period of time, even though you may have been sitting at a return up here, 
still had zero growth for a 16 year period of time. Guys, I'm not a fan of of the big boxes. I'm not a fan of all the crap that you hear out there. In fact, it bothers me when I hear people pay money for a a financial plan. Hey, I just spent $2,500 and got 100 pages of pretty paperwork that's all based on a average rate of return. There's your 7.75%. Where guess what? In a 20-year period of time, I guess in an 18-year period of time, your $10 has grown to $90 mathematically. In real life, what a load of crap. I'm shocked people even spend time looking at a financial plan that has an average rate of return in it. Any advisor is trained to give you that orange reddish line, the historical average. So historical average since 1951, missing the Great Depression years, because we can't use those years, so it throws everything out a whack. Since 2000, the average return's only been a 4.65. And that's proven with the 2008 drop, a 4.659 in the time period that your money's been in the stock market. Oh, but since 1951 and after the Great Depression and after World War II, it's a 7.75% return. Well, it's not been a 7.75% return since my real money's been in the market. Why do advisors always do that? Why do people always ask that? In real life, what's your portfolio growth is the question. And that portfolio growth is that gray line and the percent the percentage of real returns is your purple one there. If you guys would like this information, if you'd like to, to look at it a little bit more, in fact, I've got all of the content right here with all the numbers for real rates of return, please feel free to zip me an email at support at hurleyinvestments.com. If you wanna calculate these numbers that I've done, see the percentages and work them out for yourself, please feel free to zip me an email and we will PDF this right over to you. But if I can leave you with one thing today, an average rate of return is nothing like it's meant to be. An average rate of return never has given you a 7.75% yearly average in your portfolio. In fact, if your expectations are to have nine times the money you put in 20 years ago, you'll find out you're sorely disappointed because you've only doubled your portfolio once. I can't believe people let it all ride. I can't believe people listen to an advisor talk about a financial plan and create or randomly put an average rate of return. Because real rates of return, portfolio growth are so much more important than an average rate of return. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please do again email me at support at hurleyinvestments.com if you would like a copy of really the short little documentation, what we have here, all the numbers. I can email it off to you in a PDF. Again, being a licensed registered investment advisor, feel free to ask me any real questions you have in regards to the stockbroker's world. I'd be more than willing to answer any of that for you. I appreciate you listening to Rates of Return. I'll have another small video out in the next couple of days on averages and why they're not your friends. And I look forward to talking to you and having you attend the next small educational video. Thank you.